Welcome back to the channel guys. So it's time to talk about some more wrestling. I know you guys love your wrestling. I've seen y'all in the comment section. Thank you so much. So I'm going to re uh, like react <laughs> to ups and downs for WWE Smackdown August 26, 2022. I'm a little late, but it's time to talk about some wrestling. I, I love what culture. I appreciate those guys. Please let me continue to make these videos. If not, I will back off. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with a falcon arrow. Help me out on my goal to a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Let's get into this. Hello my friends, it is Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning or Wednesday <laughs> the 3rd of February. I don't know where you're gonna watch these videos. I don't know either. But in terms of my world, <laughs> we are in the brand new ups and down studio. That's why it's a little oh. bit echoey because I'm still Congrats to them. away. You What's don't up? care. It looks exactly the same. Hello, my oh. name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And we did just have a show called WWE Smackdown, and it has been bestowed upon me the powers to get the good bits and up and the bad bits are down. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's up those doubts. Let's do it. We are clearly trying to make Ricochet a big deal. Because that's not for you. Yes. Yes. Because it is about time. I Listen, I've been trying to tell my friends about him since he was Prince Puma. All the way back when he was in Lucha Underground. And all those things before he even came to NXT. I'm like, this dude, Ricochet, he's one of my favorite wrestlers coming up. I hope he comes to NXT. He's going to be big on NXT. I can't guarantee anything when he comes to the main roster. But ever since he's been on the main roster, he, they just been treating him like trash. I mean, he had a title run, but you barely can even remember that title run happening. So to see him have this match, this opening match against um, Happy Corbin, I, I was happy about it. I can tell what direction Triple H is going with them. Uh, Ricochet did a great job in NXT. So let's hope they continue the momentum and kind of build this guy up because he really deserved this and he needs a retry at a mid-card title. He really deserves it. it. Ever since he has been on the main roster, he's been treating like a goober. Exactly. But Triple H loved him back in NXT and mm -hmm. now Triple H is in charge. He's basically he, man. So it's time to make him a big deal again. He was in our first match too because he was taken on Habby Corbin and he has also got a storyline at the moment, notably... That he keeps losing and he keeps losing and he keeps losing. And the commentators even talked about this. And I tell you why this made me warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. Because once again, it ties into NXT. Because oh, yeah. Baron Corbin was the lone wolf and he was all cool and he was all badass. Yeah, that's true. Kind of get the feeling we may be going back to that. Okay, hold it. Hold it right there. As much as I love Barry Corbin when he was a lone wolf, everything like that, Deep Six is one of the best looking finishers i i can think of on the man roster period I, I love the way that it looks it's amazing but we can't go back to the lone wolf i love lone wolf we can't i like the lights and, and the music the ring ring all that stuff i loved it but he's too old now he doesn't have the hair anymore remember what that time he was dressed like a, a olive guard manager when he had the all black <laughs> all black outfit on like around the time when he had that uh that tag team match between him and seth rollins and becky lynch he can't go back to that. But if we go back to Sad Corbin, I'm cool with that. But leave the lone wolf alone. That's for the young stuff. Damian Priest, a.k.a. Punishment Martinez, is here. Let him take on that mantle. That's his mantle now. Even if we don't, we could get Sad Corbin again. The best gimmick of the last 10 years. Otherwise, this just rocked. I mean, Rick is so damn talented, it's stupid. Facts. And Happy Corbin never lets you down, and he always brings the good. And I especially enjoyed this, because Ricochet would do something like a standing shooting star press. So Corbin would be, all right, punch him <laughs> right in the face. Corbin also just hurled Ricky into reach of the ring post at one point. But that crazy Ricochet somehow jumped up onto the corner and then did a moonsault. But Corbin kept it simple once again, because he took this fall yeah. and threw him into Alan the announce table. I like the basics. Happy they went for the end of days, but somehow Ricochet turned it into a DDT. And Rick even backflipped off the man. And I'm sorry, but I don't think that's legal. For example, if I walk outside right now and I do a backflip off an old woman, am I going to jail? Yes. Corbin was still able to deep six him, which sounds terrible out of context. <laughs> but then you will not believe this. They both got That sounds crazy. Ricochet <laughs> gave him a big boot. He climbed to the top turnbuckle. <laughs> he hit the shooting star. 
and he beat him for the one, two, three. Oh now, my yes, God. I'll admit it. Corbin took a large portion of this match, but when we got to the end, it was clean as a whistle. I'm like, man, what is round the corner? Nobody knows. Uh, Pat McAfee also yes. wrecked happy after this because he was doing the whole football punditry thing and basically drawing a circle around Corbin's face and going, ha, 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 what an absolute loaf of bread. It really made me laugh. Hero were then backstage and they bumped into the Street Profits. And while they- This was a cool moment. I, I thought it was entertaining, especially when they were like, we have, we all have something in common. And they all looked at their hands and I, well, I'll let him finish explaining it. But I thought it was a, a pretty cool moment. I'm not the biggest hit row fan. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I Like if I said in other videos, I'm not big on the, the rapper wrestler. Like, and it's not even about like the way anyone looks or anything like that. I felt that, that way about John Cena when he first started off. I feel that way about the acclaimed over in AEW. I can't stand those guys. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Road Dog. Same thing with these guys, but it's nothing against them. I'm just not a fan of that type of gimmick. It just seems weird to me. But the weird part on top of that about me, because I'm weird, is that I like rap. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just feels like, I don't know. Pretended like they hate each other. They were all then like, well, no, we're actually friends. Let's go and have a smoke. Words to that effect. We just had this awesome Drew McIntyre promo, and I swear, if he doesn't win at Clash of the Castle, what are we doing? Although that promo was fantastic. Toes, yeah. I don't think he's going to. Yeah, he's going to lose that. And one. then we had a promo with Karrion Cross and Scarlett. And you know, I think his promo was up there with Johnny Gargano when they did the the promo for him when he was going to uh, he was going to, into the uh, NXT Championship match when he had all the kids at his old at his old hometown and. They were holding up titles and everything like that. I, I kind of got the same feeling from this. I wasn't really that invested in Drew McIntyre. He's great in the ring. He's great on the mic. But the way they put that together, it was fantastic. I loved every bit of it. Deal with these two. They just go, hey, we really like clocks, man. Tick tock, tick tock, <laughs> time, time, time. I mean, seriously, if you're a friend of theirs and they have a birthday coming up, just buy them a time telling device. And also, what Drew McIntyre should do uh, is break into his house they really love and steal all his clocks because <laughs> Gary and the Scarlet will come home like, ah, what are we meant to do now? <laughs> Driven this into the ground. This was also the night where we needed to fix the women's uh, tag team tournament, so we did have a fatal four-way oh, second man. chance match because, of course, two other teams have already dropped out. So it was Natalia and Sonya Deville, Zia Lee and Shotzi, Nikki Ash and Dewdrop, as well as Tamina, There's Nobody Mina, and Dana Brooke. I don't know, this was kind of all right, but it felt yeah, very it was much okay. like a band-aid. Because the real issue is that clearly this was never in the plan, so we had to find three minutes on a random show in and order was to obvious. try and make it good again. And because they barely had any time, it was just rush, 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 go, go, go. And the only real thing of note is when Dana Brooke took Nikki Ash and did a suplex on to every other person. That was a crazy spot. Somebody was gonna die. I do yeah. agree with the winner though, because as soon as DeVille had seen that, she was like, all right. She grabbed Nikki, she rolled her in the ring and she beat her for the one, two, three, which also means later on, we are gonna have another match with Sonya DeVille and Natalia because they got to take on Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez. So all of this does make sense. Like you can justify it. I really didn't think this one clicked. It wasn't that yeah, it wasn't that great, but you know what? Uh, I understand when they always try to get Natalia involved and stuff because she's she's a pretty solid in ring performer. Like she's pretty solid, so uh, I'm never mad seeing her involved in like these type of matches or any type of women's match for that matter. Time to build up to the pay per view though, premium live event because of course we have an intercontinental title match between Gunther and Sheamus. Club me sideways, this was great. Sheamus and his boys came out first, and quite clearly we are trying to make them baby faces before this show. Because when you go through it, it is basically Team England and Team Ireland heading over to the United Kingdom. Why the hell not? Sheamus also <laughs> promised to beat Gunther and become the Intercontinental Champion. And you don't do that on a wrestling show because your opponent is always waiting behind the curtain going, no, no, give it a second. But if he says something I don't like, I'm going out there. Well, came Gunther and Ludwig. Sheamus basically <laughs> cut him off early though and did the whole, I beat everybody. I beat this part had me dying when they were just standing next to each other. Just They were staring. It was uh, Gunther. I miss Walter. But Gunther and uh, Shane is just staring at each other and everybody was just fighting around them. It just, it was weird. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. It was almost like, um, like when you play in a video game and they tell you to pick what to say to the person and you're waiting to hit the button. They're just standing there just kind of like, 
and things around them is just moving, but it just they're just like staring at each other. It felt like that's what was going on when they were like kind of giving each other a stare off. It was so weird. I beat John Cena, I beat Drew McIntyre, I beat you, I beat Arnold Schwarzenegger, I beat Santa Claus. Oh my god, you're so talented. Gunther is the end of level boss though, and what was quite funny here is he was like, how dare you compare us to each other? I am Gunther the greatest in all the land, and you shall not be taking my title, because I'm the best. And then all of their friends, all of their buddies, like the brawling brutes and Ludwig, started to have this fight. But the whole time, Sheamus and Gunther just stared at each other. Yeah. That sounds silly when you say it out loud, but when you're watching it, it was like, oh, the lally. I mean, it just makes you think that somebody had told them, listen, you two, if you get into a staring contest, whoever loses will also lose the title. But there was something to this, and eventually everything calmed down, and they were split up, and they did more looking. But am I pumped for this match? You bet your ass. Yes, I am. And then they got back up and stood next to the two. It was almost like an episode of Three Stooges. It was it was hilarious. Like it wasn't terrible. It was just hilarious. But yeah, just like him, I'm looking forward to this because as I said before, Sheamus is one of the most hard heading and the most underrated wrestlers when it comes to WWE. I, I personally thoroughly feel like that. Him and Sami Zayn are so underrated. It's not even funny. But but specifically because he's in this segment here, Sheamus, man. He's so hard hitting and especially getting into a match with Gunther. Having this hard hitting match against each other, it's going to be, if they let it go where I want it to go or where they should let them go, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see it. But don't bet your ass. How are you going to poo? That's the point. Why did I say that? The point is, is getting it up. We had a quick interview yeah. with Sonya and Natty after this, and they were like, well, we're going to win the tag team championships, even though it's okay they weren't going to. And I'm pretty sure in the background, do drop and arguing. Nikki Ash were having some kind of an argument. Now, I yeah. could be wrong here, but if I am correct, I really enjoy just dropping in these little story beats in the distance because it makes it feel so damn real. And then Yeah, it's dope. I like when they've been doing that, especially what they've been doing with... Uh... I can't... I'm, I, I don't know what's going on today. I haven't had breakfast. Came straight from work to here, but I can't think. What in... Um... Dang, what the heck? Hold on, let me... Sorry, y'all, let me... I, I, how am I forgetting this dude's name? Oh, Dexter Loomis. I didn't even have to Google it. Dexter Loomis, what they've been doing with him as far as like sprinkling things in the background and having things go on while something's going on in the front foreground, I've been liking that. There's like the little Easter eggs they're playing around. That's that's pretty cool to me. Once again, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn had a segment and they absolutely killed it. And really, the person to beat Roman should be Sami Zayn. I mean, it's never going to happen, but if it did, it would be awesome. As ever though, the Usos wouldn't let Sammy into the dressing room, although Jay was far more hostile than Jimmy was. Yeah, Jay's when getting Roman jealous. When heard his new pal on the outside, he was like, way, come on in. They even talked about the Claymore kick that Zayn had taken for Roman last week, and Reigns was all like, that's what family does, man, because you are family. And even the Usos agreed with that. So if you are taking notes, remember, if you have never taken Claymore kick for your mother or something, she You're not family. Consider you family. Yeah. Sammy was so happy to hear this, and when these guys <laughs> turn on him, it is going to break your heart because you can see it coming a mile away, and you can also yeah. see the manipulation here. Because Sammy's yeah, it's clear oh, we're the bloodline. We should go take out the Scottish warrior together, and these three schmoes will. Oh no, we think you should do it, Sam. Poor guy. The key part to all of this, though, is that even though Jimmy and Sammy did do this handshake at the end, Jay was basically like, nah, bruh, you better get out of here. <laughs> Once again, we're just planting the seeds. And the dynamic between Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn, for some reason, it's fantastic. is so damn good. It's fantastic. Up. And then it was back to the women's tournament. This one was better. It certainly wasn't right home material, especially because if I did do that, my family would hate me even more than they already do. But it was Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah taking on Sonya Deville and Natalia. And basically, when we were writing this script, somebody went, we need to get that there Raquel over. Let's give her a push. Bailey Dakota Kai and Eo Sky were also on commentary for this. Once again, Bailey was just like Michael Cole, I hate you with all my being. And I do find <laughs> it was. interesting. And in the early going, Aaliyah got taken out, like literally. There was no big baby face comeback here. She got murked, she was chucked out of the ring. So Raquel basically had to be on a two-on-one match. But 
they couldn't stop her. It was just like, rah, Rodriguez, and she kicked their ass. I mean, seriously, it was like Raquel had been through the WWE 2K22 moves list because she took DeVille and threw her into her own partner. She hit this elbow drop and she went for the Texana ball. She wasn't able to do that because Sonya smacked her with a knee instead. But when that only got a nil fall, <laughs> Rodriguez dusted herself off. She hit the decks out of bomb. One, two, three. And the best part is, as soon as she won, Aaliyah was back in the ring going, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> this is going to backfire so badly for poor Ali because it was like, well, you show up now, don't you? And even Bailey said that on commentary. This does mean we. It's almost like it's the same storyline they tried to play with. Uh... Well, Gonzalez and Dakota Kai in NXT before Dakota Kai left. It seemed like it's the same thing. But one thing I did notice is that they're giving Aaliyah a lot more spot spotlight right now, uh, including last week and this week and, and things like that. And then if you notice in the tag matches, there's been a lot of like a lot more like tag team moves happening here, like they were in NXT. Like before Triple H took over, we didn't see a lot of actual tag team moves. Maybe someone does something, the other person does something after, but we've seen more of like two people doing moves together as of lately. That's a small thing. It's not really that big for some people, but it's just something I noticed. We have our finals that are going down on Raw, though, and seriously. EO and Sky, no, wait, Sky and Kai, whatever the hell they're called, should win <laughs> this, and then Naomi and Sasha Banks return. I mean, it just makes all the sense in the world. We are yeah. definitely getting a match between their maximum male models and Hit Row 2, because not only did they have a little skit on this SmackDown, but then the match got confirmed for next week. The models were doing a photo shoot here, though, because they loved doing that, when it got interrupted by Hit Row, who were playing their own theme song, Loud from a Bus. Well, that's kind of arrogant. <laughs> Maxine Dupree couldn't handle this. No, wait, Max Dupree couldn't handle this. But Maxine was like, well, I've got a plan and she went and found Los Lotharios. All this turned out to be, though, is that they took spray paint and they spray painted Hit Row's bus, but they're such goobers, they got the wrong vehicle and out came the Street Profits and they're like, damn you kids, what have you done to our bus? Now all of this was kind of fine, but when you have a gimmick that is as stupid as this, you have to be more goofy, like that yeah. first skit they did when it was absolutely ridiculous. And this was just somewhere in the middle, I was a bit like, massively didn't much get out of it. See, I couldn't even form proper sentences because it's just not what I wanted. It's the same thing with the 24 seven title. I don't mind you having it, but make it the dumbest thing on the planet. Yeah, make it goofy. Get this down. But then the new day went back and you know- Like make it goofy like how Breezango was kind of goofy. Fashion files, things like that. Let's go down the goofy department with this stuff. Heel. They never miss. Because they were selling their injuries too, and Xavier Woods was even in a wheelchair. And both him and Kofi Kingston were like, we did not understand the power of the Viking Raiders to the point that now it may be the end of the new day. And even they've been together since like 1672, it's still very go up. Please don't break up, because I love them. From nowhere, Eric and Ivar then teleported in, and as always, they just talk in riddles like, we are the Vikings and we will eat your livers. But it turned out this was just a big ruse, because when they got to the ring, Kofi Kingston back to the corner like, please don't kill me. When Xavier Woods stood up from the wheelchair, he's not injured. He was also hiding a kendo stick in his pants. He threw one to Kingston, and they they fought the Viking Raiders off. Now we're going to get an ODQ match on SmackDown next week. See, it's like Jenga. We took all the pieces and they fit together. Get it up. The Usos were then ruining Sami Zayn. I agree with that. Again, up. backstage, go, oh, you made me Drew McIntyre. All the worst things ever going to happen. And then we did get the second part of the Drew McIntyre video, which was so damn good. This is all very handy. because It was our main event. Sammy versus Drew. You knew this was going to be good as well. But Speaking of good promo videos, please, can we get a push for Ali? Mustafa Ali, if you guys have not watched 205 Live and saw his original promo videos on there, they were fantastic. They were fantastic. So, Ali, give Ali a push. He needs a mid-card title at some point. Please let that happen soon. This dude is talented. Talented on the mic, talented in the promos, talented in the ring. Give him, some, give him, give him an opportunity, man. Because they can't have bad matches. And the best part was, is that Drew McIntyre was going for a super-duper mega move at one point, and Sammy Dave just went, boop. And he poked him right in the eye. It's the simple <laughs> things. He also hit a sunset bomb and a tornado DDT for a near fall. But you know the deal with Drew McIntyre. He's Scottish and therefore he has a hard head and he calls it a kiss. I don't know. I mean, the movie's called Glasgow Kiss, which makes no sense. So he went bang, he 
smacked him right in the skull. This was the time for Drew to go nuts and he hit his belly to belly to set up the Claymore. But then of course the Usos came running out and they had restored their MP so they were casting distraction, distraction. Sammy did use this to hit the blue thunder bomb for another near two. But you know the deal recently, WWE may as well have had a mega horn and going, make sure you push Drew so hard. Drew is the man. Oh my gosh, we love Drew. So he basically just shook all of this off. He hit the Claymore kick. One, two, three. Because we are getting close to the pay-per-view, oh, premium live event though, Roman Reigns came storming out after this. And while McIntyre was able to get a few licks in, he eventually got speared and then the bloodline murdered him. Seriously. Police are going to see this footage and say, I'm sorry guys, you got to come to jail. Because not only did they absolutely <laughs> wreck him with chairs, but they threw him into Barry Barricade. Sami Zayn even got a shot at him. He hit him with the halluva kick. And then when he was back in the ring, Roman grabbed him in the guillotine like, oh, I'm yeah. going to strangle him. Sim with the Steel Steps also got involved. And this week's episode of SmackDown actually ended with McIntyre on the floor, with Roman Reigns sat on a chair, holding both belts over his body. Now, I was a bit like, well, that's a pile of baloney. You're meant to be the head of the table, and I don't see any wood. But even though the bloodline are quite dominant, there's still something about them, and I am now ready for this match, and I'm still not 100% sure who is going to win and who is going to That's a good thing, though. That's a good thing. Good work, my friends. Up. Which didn't yeah. really bring us to the end of SmackDown. As you can see, it's certainly not a perfect show, but good grief does it have momentum at the moment. And the spoilers for next week's are already out because, of course, the WWE crew is coming across to Europe. And if you want to get excited about some stuff, well, maybe you want to check them out. I don't want to. Now, uh, please do leave a comment below and let us know. know what you thought about last night's episode of SmackDown. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hello. Go to whatculture.com, it's over here, and make sure you check out some articles, then zoom back this way, and you can follow- Okay, at the end of the day, I completely agree with his ups and downs. I wouldn't- well, he doesn't have a middle, like a, an okay part, because- so, those two downs, maybe one of them would have been just okay, but I pretty much agree with him. I love Simon Miller, man. He cracks me up every single time, but- I thought SmackDown was enjoyable. I'm loving- it's a good place to be right now for wrestling, especially in WWE. So- I'm excited about what happens, Zach. I'm excited. And if you guys have not seen it, go ahead and check out my video for how to perfectly book Liv Morgan. I'm going to put it down in the description. Go ahead and check that out for me, please. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I love good comments, bad comments, any comments. But anyways, thank you guys so much for sharing this moment with me. I greatly appreciate you guys. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.